Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful and realistic shadow and throughout the video I'm going to show you a lot of secret sauce to avoid problems and make the shadow more realistic. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So let's get started here and of course what we do have is a background and a model that is already isolated from the background. Look at this video where you can find out more about how to make selections better. So first of all we have to look at our image and analyze it a little bit. In this case the sunlight is coming from behind so the shadow is falling in front of our model into this area here. But when we look at our picture we have multiple problems here. For example the legs are overlapping and the be one leg is behind the other leg also the suitcase is a little bit in front of the legs also. So we have to figure out how to solve that problem. First of all, classic step is to right click and duplicate that layer and then go to arrange and flip vertically so it's upside down. And now we can simply move this down here and try to find a good position where the elements are still touching. Already you can see the problem with the leg that we have to fix in a second. All right. So of course, because we are dealing with light here and that is spreading out from the source, we have to accommodate that. And of course, we have here the benefit that this um, dock has a little bit of a perspective in it that can help us figure that out. Now to get the perspective I'm not going to use our perspective tool over here. The reason for that is because this would rasterize and also crop the image to the edge of the canvas. This is not what we want. Instead we are going to go over here to live filters and select perspective from that and apply it to just that layer here. And now as you can see this has preserved our original shape and we can now use that to bend it into perspective. We can use our lines here if we want. And by the way, how the shadow looks, how the shadow turns out really has a lot to do with where the light source is coming from. Maybe don't position the light source into a very complex position and also maybe look for the ground to be rather flat because this makes your work a lot easier. All right, so let's look here what we want to do. Also look at our suitcase on what is going to happen here. You can see we probably want to move this down here, have a little bit of overlap, keep these sides here straight, move this down here. So that starts to look pretty good. Of course, we have to still do some adjustments here. Let's see, I think I want the shadow to be a little bit shorter. So let's move this closer on both sides. So we also have the shadow of the head in our image still. And that actually looks pretty good. I will go with that. Let's move this a little bit over so it's on a straight line. And okay, that is good. I will keep that and to make this actually happen and give me a good selection. I will right click on that layer. I will actually duplicate so I have a backup and then again on the duplicate I will right click and rasterize. So now this is one layer. The reason why I need that now is because I need that to create a selection. So I'm going to move this below our original picture like so. So you can see here it's now in the background and now I'm going to right click on that layer to create a selection from that. With that done, I'm going to create a new pixel layer over here, I'm going to call it shadow, shadow like that. And now comes the step where we paint in the shadow color. The question now is what is the shadow color? A shadow is not naturally black because the shadow picks up on the ground, the color of the ground, but also the color of the reflections that surround the area where the shadow is falling, right? So shadows, as you can see here, are usually not black. They have a certain color. So we're going to pick from our picture in this darker area here. Let's, for example, take this. You can 
play around with different colors for your shadow. You can see this has a little bit of a blue in there and I will simply paint that area that we have made the selection from like this. Okay, now I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. You can see the picture is still in the background. We can turn that off and we can also reduce our shadow in opacity like so to, just to get a first taste on how it's going to look. Not too bad, not too shabby, but now here is the question, how do we fix the thing here with the leg? Well, this is rather easy in that case. The only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my freehand selection tool. Let's set feather here to, let's say um, two pixels maybe, let's say one pixel actually. And then I'm going to select this leg here individually. I'm holding my shift key so I can simply click, click, click and create these lines around the leg and gives me a selection of that that we can now use as a shadow. So we have created that. I will make a second layer here and I will also paint that with our color that we have selected for our shadow. You can't see it right now because it's behind the picture. This is what our leg is going to look like. All right, so now also set it to multiply and also reduce this. Let's see, the opacity here is 64. Let's set this also to 64 so we have a certain similarity in our shadows. And now what I can do is, let's for example bend this down here like this and I will move it up a little bit so it's touching here nicely on the shoe. And then the next step I'm going to use my mesh warp here and I'm simply going to bend this over so it's going to line up with my leg in a rather natural way. Let's see. That looks kind of nice. Can bend this down here a little bit like so. That is okay, I would say. Beautiful. Okay, let's go like this. You have to be a little bit artistic here, but I think you can manage that. Don't worry. You can always go back, try again. Let's hit apply here. Looks beautiful. Then of course on the other layer we need to now delete the shadow we don't need anymore. So let's go here. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to delete the parts we don't need like so. Now here in the edge area it's going to be a little bit iffy um, at first because we're going to have a little bit of a darker area here. But I will show you a trick on how to make that better. I think I'm gonna go here with mesh warp again. Just want to move this a little bit over like so. Okay, that's pretty good. Apply. Okay, so um, we have this area now. I'm actually going to delete the other area here because we don't need that actually from that part of the foot. We have to clean that up later a little bit as you can see to just bring that over. But for now we don't need that so that's good. Um, I will hide this real quick then I will go in here make a lasso selection of that area here and then I will copy and then delete and then paste so it's on a new layer. Deselect, use my mesh warp again and then simply and very easily bend this into a position that I like more, like so for example. That's okay. Click on apply. Now delete that area here a little bit. Delete that area here a little bit to make this gap here rather small. Good. Now that we have all that, as you can see like this, we still have here an area that is a little bit annoying like that. Okay, good. Now as you can see, what we're going to do is I select all of the shadow layers that I've created. I'm going to put them into a group and then I right click and rasterize all of that like so. So now everything is on a layer. You can see the blend mode has changed. I will set that back to multiply so it looks as before. But now still we have these ugly lines here. So what I'm going to do here is to use my smudge brush tool and I let's make this a little bit smaller actually. I will simply smudge this around a little bit and you can see magically because our shadow just has one color magically that line is going to appear and makes for a very nice and smooth shadow. Also down here we're going to do that and you can see just like that we have created a beautiful shadow that actually follows the shape of our legs down here. So that's pretty nice. 
Now, of course, the shadow is still missing some parts and here it becomes very important to know what to do. So first of all, the shadow has to fade out the further it is away from the subject. And secondly, it also has to blur the further it is away from the subject. So the first we are going to introduce a little blur here with our layer effects. Turn on Gaussian blur, turn this on a little bit. Maybe just one pixel is good enough like that. Now, how about the opacity? That is very easy to do. Go over here, create a rectangle over your area gradient, go to black. And then on the other side, we need to set this to opacity zero like that. That's pretty important. One side has full opacity, other side has no opacity. And you can see this gradient is going the wrong way. So we are going to use our gradient tool to draw this in here again like so. And this is non-destructive, so you can always readjust that later on. Don't worry too much about that. So how do we apply that now for the visibility? We're going to use this as a mask. So right click on the rectangle layer and say mask to below. And this is going to go onto our shadow layer here. And as you can see now with our gradient, I can simply fade out the shadow from its strength and make it weaker where I want it to be weaker. So that is super useful for us. And that already looks pretty good. Now I want to also have the shadow blur more in the distance. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually duplicating our shadow layer, turning one off. I often do this just to make safe it's non-destructive and I have a backup. Now I'm going to rasterize everything again, like so. We don't need to preserve the effect, rasterize that like so. And then I'm going to apply a live filter for Gaussian blur this time, it's up here. Put that on my new shadow layer that I've just created. And now when I open that up, I want to set the radius to the furthest distance from my shadow. So the hat, look at the hat and say, okay, this is how blurry I want the shadow to be. Let's say I want it to be like this. So we still have like a feeling for the shadow of the hat, but the rest is a little bit blurry. And now that we have set this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my gradient tool. Again, you have to go in here, set this up as linear. Now in this time, what we have to do is we have to go in here and set one side to black and the other side to white. And now I can paint this in here. And as you can see, black side gives us no effect white gives a hundred effect. So we have to turn this around. So the black is here close to the subject and the white, as you can see, is up here. So this is actually making our shadow more blurred, the more distant it is from our main subject. So you can see this has beautifully worked. Okay. So here's another thing that I want to do here. And that is that I want to make my shadow a little bit darker in the area where it is closer to our subject. I'm going to right click and duplicate my shadow again and then rasterize everything I have here like so and then simply use an eraser and then I can delete the parts that I don't need because I only want the shadow to be a little bit uh, darker down here where it's close to the feet. And you can see here now if I turn it on and off, there's a little bit more darkness down here and I can also uh, adjust that with my opacity. Always make sure that the blend mode is still on multiply. Sometimes it changes when you rasterize. So that is pretty good. And here's the last step. Again, set up a new pixel layer, make it multiply, set it to the same, bl uh, same opacity, 64 in that case, like so. And then make your brush rather small and then simply I'm going to paint in here a little bit more darkness where it's really close to the subject just to give me that kind of extra bump because where the shadow is very, very close to the subject it's going to be super dark. So I want to have a little bit of that in here, not too much, but just a hint. And there we go. We have created our realistic shadow for the subject. We can still go in here, reduce this a little bit like so beautiful. I'm happy. I hope you're happy too. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. Maybe leave a like. Also write in the comments 
Do you think that's great? What do you want to see next? Thanks for watching. Bye.